let's go to the web browser um, developer.amazon.com. Last time we created an account here, so now we will just log into it. If you made it up like me, hopefully you wrote it down, your password, like me. Uh, if you didn't, well, you'll have to take time to create an account again. But at the top right corner, I'll click Sign In. And I do have credentials, so I'll sign in with, with what I created last time. Okay, so the last time uh, we set up our, our portal, uh, we hadn't finished working on our app. And so I have it listed right there at the bottom. I also can go at the very top where it says Apps and Services. I can click that and it shows this is my app. It has not been submitted yet. I need to continue to work on it. So if I hover over it, notice then I have uh, tools on the right side, if I hover over there, I have Edit Current Version, Game Circle, all that stuff. I'm not done with it, so I need to edit my current version. And last time, uh, we needed to do images, which we'll get to, but I need to go back to change my binary. This still has the version with all of those permissions, so this is what I couldn't show last time after the class was over, and I did it, then I realized this. I uploaded my my binary, and then it, it recognized, here's your binary, and here's your manifest, and all of that. And then I realized, looking at the manifest here, okay, well, I've got my package, my unique package ID that no one else should have, hopefully. Version code, version name, file size, okay, that's fine. But then, under show more, this is where it's asking for all of these permissions, and I realized, whoops, we forgot to turn off read contacts, record video, all of that. So it would make it look like this app was really, really wanting to use a lot more than necessary. So I need to replace this version of the binary that I've uploaded previously, that you've probably uploaded previously. So I need to, from that binary screen, I need to edit at the bottom right corner. I need to go back to edit this screen. I need to remove the binary. This is under the binaries tab. You click under apps and services and then you hover over the name of your app and then on the right side tool, click on that to edit the current app. So I'm going to remove it. It says, removing the binary will delete this existing APK file and all associated settings. That'll be fine. It's telling me I can do two things. If I've set a bunch of settings here, and I were to delete the APK, I'd have to set all the settings again. No big deal in our case. But it's saying, if you simply want to replace the APK, we'll just go down here and remove the APK. Either or will give us the result that we want, I think. So we'll just say, yeah, remove it. I have no APK, so I'm going to select again to upload it. What's that? Yeah, don't do that. Save and add a binary is like we want to add a version of the binary of the APK for some devices and a different version 
for another one. You want to click the Edit button on the bottom right, not add another APK, but to edit to replace one. I'll be right there one moment. Okay, so I'm uploading my new version, show more just to check. There. It's not all of those crazy amount of permissions, it's just the necessary ones for my um, device to work. Screen portrait, uh, course and find locations, network state. That's much more reasonable. I certify the export laws again, SDCE1, and save. So now I've got the proper version of the APK, and then we can go on to the next part about images and multimedia. You just need one more tab to be able to uh, to publish the app. So I will open Images and Multimedia. I'm going to need all of these different sized icons and graphics for showing off my app. I need one of 114 pixel size ping file with transparency. A large one of 512 ping with transparency. Some screenshots. Um, promotional image. It's recommended, but it'll be a wide image, like a banner, to show off your your uh, your app. Optional is a video. Display some sort of video at the maximum 150 megabytes, showing off your app. If you also want your, your app to be usable by Amazon Fire TVs, you're going to need these screenshots here to show off your app. So in order to complete this part, To com in order to complete this part, we need. Hmm, maybe I never saved the original graphic files. Oh no, I did. Okay. Let me provide you in the network folder with some graphics. Again, hopefully, you know, we're going to have a, some time for you to have your own version of all of this, or everyone's is going to look exactly the same but I'm going to provide in the network folder copies, starting points of our graphics so in the network folder I put a 512 pixel sized version of the app's icon and the and one of the splash screens you should copy those two and then I'm going to open the 512 graphic that'll open in Photoshop So Amazon is asking us for a small version of the graphic 114 and a large one 512 which we have ready. I'm 
I'm going to say at least so that everyone doesn't have the exact same app assets. Uh, if you loaded up my if you loaded up my uh, icon Okay, if you loaded up my icon, on the right side you'll see layers. Our, uh, this icon is made up of various layers. You should see one called layer zero copy, which is the main part of the graphic. Click on layer copy to select it so we can make a change to it. Then up on the image menu, we'll go to adjustments, hue, saturation. This will be a very simple, quick way to change the colors of the icon. Better case scenario, of course, would be that you have your own graphics. But by this point in the semester, um, we can borrow this one. So image adjustments, hue saturation. And all you really need to do then is play with this hue slider, drag it around, and it'll give you different versions of, of colors for the for the icon. You can go in and change saturation and lightness and such. Once you make that change, you can click OK. We did this a while ago when we were creating these icons, but we'll have to use the graphics software for a little bit again. We'll go up to File menu now and then Export, Save for Web. Amazon is asking us for a large 512 sized image, which is exactly what this is. It says down here the image size of this is 512 by 512. The top right corner should say it's ping 24, and it should also say transparency. So it's all set up on the proper parameters that Amazon needs. All I do then is clean, simply save. And in my flash drive, anywhere in my flash drive, anywhere in your flash drive, you're going to save save this name. It doesn't matter. I'll call it uh, app dash five twelve px or um, icon dash five twelve. This is going to be the large version of the graphic. These graphics, these graphical assets, will appear in different parts of uh, of the app store on Amazon, etc. It's branding. So I'm going to save that one. If I go back to Amazon, then I can select upload. And I'll grab that graphic. I'll upload that graphic and so I'm going to have that graphic as the large icon. I'm going to create the 114 icon based on the one I made right now. So back in Photoshop, I'll use the same one. File, uh, Export, Save for Web. And then on the bottom right, remember we were at this point where we were making these different, uh, or we were uh, changing these different sizes to make the different sized graphics. So here we'll need. 114 this is our 114 size we're still going to leave ping 24 at the top right corner with transparency this will shrink it down about 22 percent 
save. And I'll call this icon 114px. And then at Amazon, I'll select the small sized one. Oftentimes, when I talk about this part in the class, it takes a while then to create these other ones, and then it logs me out. And it and I have to, and I, and these never were saved, so I have to do it again. I'm going to save at this point so that I know that these two are saved. Notice I'm not done with this screen yet. But now I'm starting to get my icons set up. And then I need one more required one, screenshots and promotional. I'm going to do the promotional one. It's recommended, but we'll do that one because this is just another way for your app to stand out. Making a note here, I need it to be 1,024 by 500. Okay, so based on the image that I have here, this will be like a banner to show off my app. Based on this image, I can go up to Image Menu, Canvas Size, this is in inches, I need it to be in pixels, and Amazon says 1024 by 500. So it will crop a little bit and expand. So the point of this. I'm doing promotional image. So this is going to be a banner image to show off the, the graphic. I can put a little text and such. Uh, now, at the moment, the uh, this graphic is made out of various pieces. If I use the Move tool, the very first tool at the top of the toolbar, uh, if I click and then I try to move it, well, it's just a piece of the graphic. My graphic is made up of several things, as we're seeing here in the layers. I have to move this piece, and this piece, and this piece, and this piece. So if you click on the bottom piece, layer 0, hold Shift, and click on the top piece, all pieces select. All layers select. So click on the bottom one, Shift, hold Shift on the keyboard, and then click on the top one. It shows all of them highlighted, and I can move everything at once. So I want to move it off a little bit to the left, so I can have some space on the right, maybe to write some text. I'm going to write the name of the app, maybe a little blurb, a little description, and then save it. This is optional, but it's a good promotional image. It's a good uh, idea, that is, to use this promotional image. On the left, I've got the text tool. It's the little T. Here, it's up to you what text and fonts and everything to use. But uh, I'm going to say this is a My SDCE app.
learn about all the classes offered at SDC. to enroll on campus, uh, on campus. It's just a little bit of text with the text tool, changing up the font sizes a little bit. So for this, I will uh, save and export Safer Web. Amazon says for this one, landscape only, JPEG or ping. It doesn't mention with transparency, so actually no transparency. You should say no transparency. That means then I turn off transparency. So it'll have my, my graphic, my text, it's the right size. I'll save that. I'll call this uh, banner 1024px. So then with uh, Amazon, I'll upload that one. The last one that I need is screenshots and it says 3 to 10 screenshots. In order to do this we have different options. We can make screenshots based on a real device or a virtual device. Um, I suppose we could use the browser as well. I hadn't done that one before but I guess that's one that could be done too. I have to warn you though these sizes here, if you use the virtual device, the virtual device that I've written all over in my notes, the one we've always used, that virtual device screen is way too small. It's a, like 320 by 200. So this is going to require a virtual device with at least 800 by 480 pixels. to show you here when we're creating our virtual device this is the one we're creating 320 by 480 so much too small if we try to make a screenshot out of one of these it will reject it it's too small we could resize it in Photoshop but this goes against what we've said previously which is which is if you try to get a small graphic and turn it into a large graphic it'll lose quality so it's not a good idea to do that. The built-in virtual device of the Nexus, I think that one is a good size. 
Yeah, that's 1080 by 1920. So that's fine. That's nice and big to work. So if you're going to use a virtual device to take to take these screenshots, you want to use the the Nexus virtual device. You want to use your real device. It may or may not do it correctly, uh, but in either event, to create the screenshot. That goes back to a previous handout from part two. We'll, we'll do it together, but if you go back to part two of the lectures, there's one in there, I mean part two of the class, there's one in there that explains how to make screenshots. And what we need to do is we need to open up our Android uh, uh, monitor app. So I'm going to minimize all my, my apps and go to the desktop and open computer. We'll open the C drive, local disk C, the main hard drive. We'll go over to programs, program files x86. We'll open the Android folder. Android SDK. Tools folder. We have monitor. Monitor. Monitor.bat. Double click that. If you recall, this is one of the times when we did this a while ago. You might get a pop up about statistics like that. I had all my windows minimized, so I saw it. But a lot of times, what happens when you, uh, when you do this, you have one window open and it's taking over the stats and you think well nothing happened should I double click it again you get absolutely no feedback that the stats question is has opened up so if you don't get any result in five seconds minimize your windows and you probably have this thing waiting for you here yes so then I'm gonna say just proceed that's fine In my case, I'm running my virtual device. I'm sorry, I'm running my real device. And it shows that I've got that app currently running. The first row of icons we have here, screen capture. So I need to take three to 10 screenshots demonstrative of what my app is showing off what my app is. So I'm on the home screen of my app. That'll be fine. I'll show that. So I'll, I'll select up there to save. And I'll save this screenshot. The name is just fine. I'm going to save this screenshot then to my virtual, uh, to my USB. I'll save that one. I then want to show um, maybe the part where I'm customizing it. You have to remember to refresh. Click refresh to show that. So this might be interesting that it's asking for user feedback. I'll save that one. I'm just going to do the minimum of three. And then, oops, and then the other, um, the other useful thing of course is is the the database so maybe maybe add some data to the database if you don't have any try to pick some sort of some sort of part of your app that shows it off. Here, save a class. My screen is too small. I'm going to rotate it. You'll see it'll show save a class and the the fields there to fill in, and it shows I've got one class saved. Save a class, etc. So 
that'll be that'll be enough. Three screenshots. That's what I use the Android device monitor for to capture these screenshots. Now, unfortunately, my particular device, my real device, it captured screenshots of 540 by 960. Amazon said. Said these particular dimensions. So I'll need to resize these a little bit in Photoshop. Mine are 540 by 960, but what I need is 480 by 800. Uh, I guess that's the closest one because then that would be stretching it. This will be shrinking it a little bit. So 800 by 480 or 480 by 800. So in Photoshop, I would open. my screenshots image let me check which is better before you do this let me check which is better I need 480 or 800 oh, that'll look weird so I will do instead image, image size. Canvas size crops the picture. It removes pixels. It cuts things out. Um, it wouldn't look so good on mine. It's going to remove important parts. Image size keeps all my pixels, keeps everything on screen, but then shrinks it down. So under image size, I need this to be 480, which is still too too tall. So I think I have to do two things with my particular one. I'm going to shrink it down to 480 and then I'm going to crop it to 800. So I'm going to shrink it down so that I don't lose any of the width. And then I go back to image canvas size. And on the height I need 800. Still leaving a little bit there. So my particular device doesn't have very good uh, screenshots. Uh, it's, it, my device doesn't seem to be within the right screenshot dimensions. Uh, I'm not going to stress it too much, but notice this is what you would need to do in order to uh, upload some, some valid screenshots. I'll say this is fine. So in the next screenshot, I will resize it to 480. Obviously, instead of cropping, I could, at this point, change it, but then it might distort it a bit. Maybe that's a better result. Yeah, it doesn't look so bad. Actually, I think I'll do that instead. I guess I won't crop it. It, it looks a little odd. So I'll have to make one more screenshot again. So I will resize the images, not in proportion.
I have my three screenshots. They've been raised, resized to the dimensions that Amazon wants. So I go back to Amazon and upload each one. They'll be shown in this order to people. So if I wanted a particularly different order, I could do so. I'm going to save. I'll mention videos in just a moment. I'm not going to do the Amazon Fire TV because my app is not really optimized for that. A Fire TV is a uh, is a television. Televisions are horizontal. My app isn't really designed visually to be horizontal. But I could add screenshots here if I wanted to target Amazon Fire TVs. Once I added the required graphics and I saved, I have all greens. We won't submit just yet. We're going to take our first break. But at this point, we're just about ready to submit our app. So let's take a break to make sure we're all on the same page. And when we come back, I'll mention about video. This is optional, but uh, recommended. And then we'll submit. So it's eight seven uh, seven seventeen. We'll take a break until seven twenty seven and we'll keep going.